Welcome to the Hue Template Administration video. In this video, we're going to go over everything inside of the administrator for Hue, including all of the modules. So let's get started. So first, let's take a look at the menu. So we have our main menu here. If you're not familiar with the Joomla menu structure, there's many videos on YouTube, or go ahead and go to joomla.org and look at the Joomla training videos. So let me show you some of the special things that we have going on in here. So let's look at the featured articles, featured right, left, and center. As I explained in the intro video, these are just custom overrides to the category views. So let me show you how we achieve these looks. So if you go to featured right, let's see here. So we're gonna go ahead and select and you're going to come up here to your articles and you're going to select the featured right layout. Next you'll select the category you want and then you go over here to the blog layout options and since the featured right had three articles in the leading, three articles in the intro, and three columns. And that's basically it. So if you need some more information on the basic structure of Joomla menus, uh, just visit joomla.org and check out the training videos or in the forum or on YouTube. So now let's go over here to our extensions and let's look at the front page layout. So here we're in our module view and you can see all the modules that are here. So we're going to use the search tools to select by position so we can do this easier. So we're going to go to the inset position. And now we have the inset particle and what this is doing is it's rendering the J particle one, which gives us the colored circles. And then we have a div class of inset hero, and this actually styles everything that's inside of it. So we've got our H1 for our hue interior design. And then we have our closing of our H1. Then we have our div class inset icons. And these are I class, FA, FA Facebook, and so on. This is font awesome. So you can see a full list of the font awesome icons that are included under the typography section of our demo or just visit the font awesome website. And the way that you render these fonts is by using an FA class for font awesome and then the code for the different icon that you want. Here we're using the social icons. So it's FA-Facebook, Twitter, and so on. If you wanna go ahead and make these linkable, you need to change this I, you can change it to an A class in here, and, or you can go ahead and, and render an A class inside of the I classes. So no special module suffix or anything on this, pretty basic and simple with the HTML module. So next we're going to go to user1. User1 is the about us, it's also an HTML module. And here we've got just some simple markup using the bootstrap classes and using the scroll to reveal classes. So first we started with an about text div class and this is what contains that background image of the yellow circle that moves. That can be found in the CSS files. And then we have an H2 for our story. We have an HR class of mo title that gives us the, the small underline underneath our story. Uh, we're not using a border class because we want to make it smaller than the R story. Then we've got a break, and then we start our standard bootstrap class of a row fluid. Then we have our data SR, and this is the class for the scroll to reveal. And we're doing a reset, so it means that every time you scroll to it, it resets, and we want the text to enter left over 0 0.8 seconds. You can find full information on scroll to reveal by going to the GitHub or Scroll Reveal website. We also have uh, links inside of the documentation for that. Next, we want to put a class of span six, and this is our standard bootstrap two class that gives us a two columns. Two span six equals 12, which fills up the 12 column grid. So we're going to do a span six, have our P class inside of it. We're going to do the same thing here, but we changed it from enter left to enter right, and another span six, then we close first div, the second div, and the third div. And no special module class or suffix. Next we'll go to the user 13, which is going to be our little logo bank of images, logos. 
And here we have a center to center it, and we have an IMG for calling our logo bank JPEG from the core Joomla images folder, and we have an alt for logo bank and a center. Here we do have a special module suffix, which is a no pad, no marge. No padding gives the module no padding, and no marge gives the module no margin because we don't want to have any extra margin or padding. We want that totally to be relied on the region framework. So we'll close out here, and now let's go down to user 19, which is our video blog on the front page. And for this, we're using our Joomla XC Deluxe News Pro. So here we're going to select our category of video blog. And after we get to the modules, I'm going to show you how we set up the video blog. So if you want to recreate that, you can. Down here in the columns, we just need to have one column, four rows, and one page. And here under the template, you select Hue FP Blog U19. If you need to edit this template, you can do it right in the core files, or you can load the template code in the parameters here for this setting. So we go edit like this, and here you have the code for the main area, and then here's the main markup. You can edit it there and save it. And then over here on our advanced, we have all the CSS from the module. You want to also make sure that you're including plugins on this because we are using our Joomla XTC quick YouTube plugin to render the videos. And then down here at the bottom, we have a layout of float. And we do have a module class suffix of no march, no pad. And moving on to user 25. We have our gallery, which is just our HTML module again. So here we have our Joomla XSC HTML module with some simple markup. We have a center. We have an ahref going to a content article using our image gallery plugin. Then we have our scroll to reveal code. And then we have our circle code here. And here's where you put your content, view the gallery. And then we have an I class here with font awesome and an I class of bounce to give it the bouncing arrow down. Now, next, we're going to go down here to user 31. User 31 is our Joomla XTC contact wall. And the contact wall pulls information from the contact component from Joomla. So we've got the category ID set to all categories now. We have one column, one row. And then down here, you're going to want to select the template, hue contact user 31 and then over here in the settings and advanced you can just leave this as default everything is taken care of in the CSS and I'll show you in the administration of the contact component next after we get to the modules here how you go ahead and set that all up so now let's go to user 37 which is our staff blog, just showing some staff. So we're going to select category ID of the staff. And then we have three columns, one row, one page. And it's the Hue staff U37 is a template to select. And then over here in the advanced area, we're going to select the layout of float, notepad, no march. And finally, Let's look at our footer. Again, it's another HTML module, just with some simple markup. So now let's move on to the content, and let me show you about the front page video articles. So we're going to go over here, search tools. We're going to select our category, video blog, and let's select an article. So the way the articles are built is we're using our YouTube quick YouTube plugin that you can find for free on our website if you're installing this template without the quick start with the quick start it's included but you just install the module you activate it and then you use a simple tag of the brackets YouTube and the YouTube ID and that's all you need to render the video so we're rendering this video in the intro text of the article and then we have a system read more that you do by choosing the read more and then we have the full article here so the 
news pro module for the front page for the videos going back and forth you need to have your YouTube video before the read more and then the rest of the text here is going to show on the opposite side of the video now let's move over here to the contact component and let's check out how we have that contact wall set up here with the contacts so we're going to go to contacts contacts here's our Joomla contact And so the image that's shown there in the contact wall is your normal image from the Joomla contact. So we see here when we hover over, there's the image. And then if we look here, you'll see the miscellaneous information. This is the meet the team. And we are using some HTML here. You have an H2. You have an HR class of Mo Title 2. That gives it the small underline. It's not a border. It's just an HR with a width on it. And then we have our P class. Then over here we have our social. These are the social icons. This is where you can put your links in for Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Vimeo, and your Google map. So Facebook would just be your Facebook all the way through the Twitter, Vimeo, and Google map is just intended just to send you to a map page. And this is all done with the extra fields. So if you want to edit the extra fields, you can go here to the fields and the field groups. Here's where we set up the fields. These are the fields if you need to rename them or change them. Just note that if you add new ones, you're going to have to change these IDs inside of the module. So you'll have to go into the module, click that edit button, or go inside the template folder for the module and go ahead and put the field names. Because right now it's just field four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now let's go ahead and check out the template. So we're going to select a hue template, and this is our Joomla XTC XTC framework version 4.1. It's got a really nice update here. As you saw, it does take a minute for the template to load because we have included hundreds of parameters for you to style and edit your template. So it does take a moment to load. So first, uh, you'll see that we have our different items here, we have our details, our layout, our grid, our styles, typography, custom code, effects, advanced, and the menu assignment. So the details, you don't have to do anything here. This is just the default layout that you're going to be seeing, which is the Bootstrap 2. There are no other layouts inside the template as of yet. We're currently working to update the framework to handle other CSS frameworks, as well as updating the Bootstrap to Bootstrap 3 and to Bootstrap 4. So here under layout is where you would choose your layout styles, the grid style default because there's no other one, template styles you have one through four, so you can select which style you want to be shown, typography style is default because there's only one, custom options there's only one because it's custom. Here if you want to view the layout of the template you click right here view layout and then the layout opens and you can zoom in and see all the module positions. If you need to check out the documentation, you click here, support, you click here. So now let's look at the grid. So this is the grid. Now a new feature in the framework version 4.1 is prior to this, it was one long scrolling page with everything. So it was a little bit confusing to see all those parameters and have to scroll the bottom to change one thing. So we changed it up a bit. Now we have a menu item here for your responsive grid option your body, your header, your menu, your modules, your regions, region ordering, and region 1 through 12, and your footer. So we start off with the responsive grid. Um, the responsive grid is set for yes, and this is calling bootstrap responsive. It is available to set to no if you do not want it to be responsive and show different on mobile and everything go to the mobile level. If you want to be shown on desktop, the same as mobile then you would select no responsive features but the issue with that is Google will punish you if your site is not mobile friendly at this point so it's really advised to have that yes if your client demands it then you can turn it off but you really need to explain to them that this is the way of the future and Google is punishing people if their website isn't mobile friendly so next let's look at the body so here's your body width and your body padding and this is the actual inner width of the website, the body of the website. 
Right now, this is set for 1440, which is custom. You can select whatever you want just by typing it in here, but we do give you the most pop popular options, 790, 980, 1280, 1420, and onward. So now you have your header. Here are the header options. So you have the sticky header option. That means you want the header to stay at the top while you scroll, yes or no. The header width, do you want it fixed or fluid? I'm going to explain this a couple times just so you get it. Uh, the fixed width versus fluid width. The fixed width adheres to that body width that we had here. So obviously if I'm looking at this template on a 1920 screen, the body width is only going to be 1440. So that is going to be the fixed width. Everything outside of that is going to be the fluid. So we want everything inside of the 1440. So here with the header, I've got it a fixed width because I want it to be 1440. If I select fluid, it would go all the way to the left and the right, no matter what screen size. Here's your header height, the minimum height for your header, your header padding, what kind of padding you want, and your header device padding. The header device view padding, that switches out at uh, breakpoint 768. So when you go to mobile, you can have different padding for the header. And that works with just about everything here inside the grid. So now let's look at the grid for the menu. This is the main menu wrap padding. This is the wrap that goes around the whole menu. Then you have your main menu item padding. That's for each item. And your main menu item spacing. And that spacing is just a margin to the right. So if you want your items spaced out more, you'd go ahead and put in the pixel amount there. Next we have our drop down menu. Our menu animation. This is fade in up. You have a lot of different CSS3 options there. You can play with them and see which one works best for you. You have your menu style. You have a one column. It's now set for two column. You have a three column and you have a four column. Now you have a drop down width. This is the width of the main drop down. So you'll need to adjust that if you go to two column or three column or four column. Then you have your drop down menu padding. This is the padding for the drop down itself. Then you have the menu item padding. This is the menu item padding for each item. Then we have our menu position in the center, left, or right. And again, this is just the grid section. This is just setting up the layout styling and how you want things to work for the grid options. We get in the styles next. So next we have modules, and this is the separator between modules vertically. Module padding, that's the padding of the module. Next is regions. This is the region order. As was shown in the introductory tutorial, you can switch the regions around. The insets in region one, the user one through six is in region two. So if, you, if you're only using, say, eight regions, then you can go ahead and just select eight regions so we're not even rendering the others. Or if you want to change them around real quickly, you can change them here. And this is a separator between regions and pixels. We have zero set right now. So now let's look at each region. Each region is going to have these options. They're all the same except for region three because it does have the components, so there's a few more settings in there. But so you have your region width for region one, fixed or fluid. Again, this is going all the way to the edge or fixed to that body width. Next, collapse bootstrap gutters. Okay, Bootstrap is going to go ahead and put a gutter in between every single module. So if you have four modules there, there's going to be a margin in between them. If you want them just to be hammered together and still use Bootstrap, instead of having to go in and do some kind of override to Bootstrap to make that happen, we can go ahead and collapse the Bootstrap gutters right here by just clicking Yes. Next, you have your Region 1 pattern. Next, you have your Region 1 device view. So you can hide a region for devices. Let's say you have an area where you're using Flash and you want it to be on the desktop only because most phones don't handle Flash at all. So you can say you want to hide it on phones, you want to hide it on phones to tablets, or portrait tablets. Next you have your region one device pattern. Here you can alter the device pattern. So when we go down to a device view, maybe you don't need as much padding on the top and the bottom or the left and the right. This is where you'd enter that. And that's the same now for the rest of these, except now we've introduced region one only has the inset and a couple other modules. Region two 
all the way to 11 has a left and right sidebar available. So here we have the standard width, gutters, the padding, and this is the width of the sidebars. The sidebars, again, it's all bootstrap. So if you have the gutters, I mean the sidebars, excuse me, here set for two and two here, that means that the content area is gonna be a span eight because we have to get to 12. So you can set these to different levels and see the width that you want, all based on Bootstrap. And here's the device view again, and here's the device padding. As you see for region two, we have a different device padding when we go to mobile. Region three, the only thing that's changed here is we've introduced the region three component padding, and that's for the component. Same thing with the sidebars and device view. And you'll see that's the same through region four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then 12. 12 is just has six modules, bottom one through six. So there's no left and right on that. So let's go ahead and move on to the styles now. Lots going on here. So let's look at style one. So here in the styles, we're gonna start off with the colors. And these are the base colors. The base colors in a lot of our templates, uh, we use them to assign a base color to a class in the CSS. You can do it in inline styling too, um, but these are the base colors for one through five. In this template, they're used just a little bit, but we rely a lot more on the other colors. So here's your button colors. This is the default button color, and these are all the bootstrap button colors. So we've assigned color values that match the template for the button colors. Next is your typography colors, your body text color, your heading class color, your global link color, and your global hover color. And then we have the back to top color. The back to top is an optional effect, but you can go ahead and change the colors here under the colors. Next we have our body. And in the body, we have an overlay background color. The overlay is available as a module. If you activate a module in the overlay position, you'll get an overlay on the template that can have an image, and then you can have a color, and when you scroll, the overlay will slide up. We use this feature in our Burger Time template. If you want to check out the Burger Time demo, you can see exactly how the overlay works. Next, we have a body background video. Since Joomla, the Joomla Media Manager does not handle background videos or videos at all at this point, what you'll need to do is you'll need to upload, manually upload a video to the templates, images, backgrounds folder. Then you can go ahead and type in the video name here. And then we have the background video display. Do you want it to be on the home page, all pages or none? Next, do you want to loop the video? Do you want to mute the video? The background video opacity. This is really good if, say, you have an image and you just want to have like a video effect, like lightning or something. You can go ahead and set the opacity so the image comes through. Next is the video speed. Video speed can be really cool too. You can slow the video down or speed it up. And then we have the background video preload. So if you want to optimize your site, maybe don't preload it and wait for the site to load and then it'll render it or auto. We'll go ahead and it will render it as the site loads. Next is the body homepage styles. So on the body homepage, you can have a background color. You can have a background image, your background image position. You can type in your own stuff here or you can use the pre-selected options. Outer wrap background image size, auto, contain, or cover. Auto is going to be the normal size. Cover is going to cover the, all the area, and contain is going to contain it and move it in. The problem with contain is that if you have an image and as you pull it in for mobile, it's going to shrink accordingly, so it might not be tall enough. So we're using cover to cover the, all the available space. Now we have background video device view options. This is a great feature of our templates because you can go ahead and select to have no background images 
for device view, the same image that you're rendering up here, or you can swap them out. And this works really well because mobile loading time can be very much so affected by images. So if you have a huge image in for the desktop, you really don't want to render that to a device. And the problem with using something like an adaptive image plugin or something like that is, in a lot of cases, you're not going to have a really tall image in there. You're going to have an image that fits perfectly. So when it starts to resize it, it's not going to resize it tall enough for the device, especially if you have a fixed background. So you can select an optional background if you choose swap, like we did here, for the body for the 979 for tablets, portrait tablets at 768, and phones at 480. And so what we did was we took our original image and we resized it, but left the height. So we just did different cuts of the image to make sure the part of the image that we wanted to showcase was always there. So we went ahead and uploaded three different images. So when you go to mobile, they swap the images out. And this is the body subpage. So you can have a different background color, a different background image, and everything for the subpages, as well as the same for the device view options. Now for the header, you have a header top background style. In this template, we're not using the top left and top right module positions. They are above the header. So say you want to put your social icons above the header and maybe contact details, a phone number. This is the background color for that. Next is the full width background style. And this is the wrap background color. The header wrap sticky background color. So we have two options here. So you can have a background color. As you see in our template, we have a transparent header. But when you scroll, it turns to black. So this is the setting for that. This is your value here. If you have a sticky header and you want to change the color as you scroll, that's what you would choose. You can choose a wrap image, the position, and the background size. Next, we have the header wrap device view options. These are the same thing that we just went over for the device view. Then we have the header fixed width. So if you have your template set for in the body for 1440 like we had, and you set the header in the grid for a fixed width, this is going to be the fixed width area here. So you could have a different color for the full width that goes all the way out, say a purple, and then you could have for the header fixed width, you could have green inside there. So this has the same settings color, image, image position, outer wrap, background image size, and then the device views. Now for the logo, we have our logo website, logo image. You can select it from here, select your logo, upload it from there. Now we have the padding. This is the padding for the logo. Your image position, do you want it to be absolute, fixed, or just static? Your logo position, top, left, or right. Logo text, this is optional. You can have text in here, so you can have your logo and your text, as you see in our demo. You have the logo text padding, logo text color, and the text position. Next, we have the mobile logo. The mobile logo will switch out at uh, breakpoint 768, so you can have a different image for your logo for mobile. And in this case, all we did here is we left the logo because it's just that color wheel, and then we pulled out the logo text. So same settings here and here. Next, let's look at the menu. So this is the main menu styling. So you've got a background color for the menu, and that's just for the wrap that goes around the menu. So if you want to put one color around the menu itself, you can do it here. You've got the menu item background color. So for each item, you can have a background color. You can have a hover color you can have a background color. Now, in the framework, it's not best to leave these blank for the colors. You want to put transparent if you want no color. That's just because it's not going to echo out anything inside of the CSS. It's just going to have a, a background with no value. So you want to set that for transparent. Next is the menu text color, the hover color, and the active color. Now, you can choose icons. You can have icons for the parent icon. So if you have a drop-down menu, you can put an icon on that. So you can select none 
or choose from the available icons here that are all font awesome. And now for the hover effect, this is what you want it to do. You want it to go right 90 degrees, do you want it to go right 180, however you want it to be affected when you hover. Then we've got a main menu border position. So do you want the, a border? You can have a left border, a right border, a top border, or you can have a border around all sides of that main menu. As you see here, we don't want a border on the main menu, so we're just going to set it to zero pixels. So it has all the options here, but it's not rendering the border. So other than that, you've got a border style, dotted, solid, dashed, um, all the border styles. Then you have a border color, a hover color, an active color, and a border radius if, say, you want it to be rounded. Next, we go to the main menu drop-down styling. This is the drop-down background color. This is the color for the wrap of the drop-down. Next, there's a border radius for that, so if you want to round it, you can do it there. Then you have your menu item background color, hover color, active color. Menu drop-down item border radius, so if you want it to be rounded, you can do it there. Menu item text color, it's white. Then we have our hover color of the blue and our active color. Then you've got the same thing here, your parent icon. If there's a sub item, you can have it show an icon and you can have the hover effect. Then you have your same border here. As you see, we're using a bottom border with a one pixel solid. The border color is black to go ahead and not show any border because the background is black, so it's black. And then on hover, we want it to be the darker blue, and on active, we want it to be the darker blue. Then you also have a border radius for that border. So a lot of power here, uh, very basic settings, but there's a lot that you can do. Now for the default module, you can have a module wrap background color. So if you want the module to be a certain color, the, the whole module, you can have a different title background color, and then you can have a first word, and the rest of the words color. So let's say you want your first word, if it's module suffix, the first word will be one color and then the rest of them will be another. This is good for two words. If it's like our blog and you want R to be in green and the blog to be in blue, you can do it there. And this is the module border radius. If you wanna have a rounded module, you can set it here, change the pixels. Next, we're gonna move into the regions. Now, the regions are all going to be the same, except for, like I said before, Region 3, because Region 3 does contain the component. So there's a couple different areas here. First, we're going to deal with the Region Full Width Background Style. So again, if we have a site that is using the body of 1440, then everything inside of the Region 1 Fixed Width Background will be that. The rest of the site will be the full width. So as you see here, there's no real styling going on. In region one, we're actually using the body background. So let's go to region two where we have some information so we can go ahead and see how this works. So here, our outer wrap background color is white. We have an image, which is the region two wrap JPEG, and we want it to be no repeat fixed. We want it to be cover and this is the custom inner wrap CSS class. So let's say that you want to do a shadow on the region on the top and the bottom. This is how you do it, a box shadow. Let's say you want to put a gradient for the background since you can't select a gradient color from here inside of Joomla's color manager or our special color picture picker. None of them will do a gradient. So you would add your gradient code right here. That's custom CSS for it. So now we go to the device view options, and yet again, yes, we want to swap out this background image for smaller images. So we set swap, and we upload our images here for 979, 768, and 480. Now we have our fixed width, and our fixed width, we're using an RGBA to give it a darkness over it, and then we have an image, and we have an image repeat. And since it's a small image and we're repeating it, we don't need to swap it. We just want to say yes. We want to have the background images there. Now region three is the same thing. 
the only thing different about this is we go down here and we have a component background style. So if you want the component to be a special color, and if you want the region three sidebars, region three sidebars are what are gonna to be to the left and the right of the component. You would choose the wrap background colors here if you wanna wrap those with a color. So region four, region five, region six, and so on. They all, all the same, same thing, your background style, your wrap device view options, your fixed width style, and your device view options. Go to footer, same thing. And now we're on to J content. Now this is where we're gonna style the Joomla content. So the page title color is here. Image opacity, okay? This is the content image. You might be wondering why would we want an opacity? Well, if you would like your images all to have a tint of a color, say your template's blue, and you want your images to have a nice little color, then you would set your color here for the background because we're putting a background color to the image. And next you set your opacity down from one, zero, nine, zero, seven. So you let that background color into the image. Now we already have it set that when people hover over it, it goes to opacity one. So it's set up for when they're not hovering and gives you just a nice little color coordinated look. Then you have your Joomla content article title color. Then we have our category blog, your category title color, your blog item background color. So let's say that you want to have each blog item have a background on it. You'd set it here. You have a category blog item text color, the text color for it, the padding, and the border radius. Here's your read more button style. So you have a position for it. You can either put it on the left or the right. You can have a background color, a text color, a border color, a hover color, a text hover color, and read more button hover. And here's your button style. This is your button style for your read more and globally, the radius if you want to have it rounded. Next is the typography. So you have your typography left or right. Here's your web font. So if you want to use a web font such as a Google font, you would just copy the Google code in here to call the web font. Then you have your body. So you have a desktop body. Here's your body font size, your font family, and your font weight. Mobile at 768, you can flip this out. So if you want the body size to increase or decrease, you want to change the font weight or the font family, you can do that for mobile. Next is your menu. Here's your options for your font sizes, for your main menu font size, your font family, your font weight, the drop downs, and for the mobile. Logo, here's your logo font size. Global heading, this is for your heading classes. This is your heading font family, your font weight, and your H classes. Same for mobile. Component heading, this is the Joomla component heading. So if you're using a component and has a page title heading or a component heading, you can set it here, both the desktop and mobile. Your category, this is for your categories. Your article your module, and your breadcrumb. So typography is going to handle all of your font and your font sizing from desktop to mobile. Next is the custom code. So if you have a custom code that needs to be inserted into your head code, say from Google or your Facebook pixel, you can just paste it right in here. Next is the body code if you need to put something in the body or if you have some JavaScript code you need to load, you could put it into custom code. Next is the effects. So, the effects. We have a lot of effects to go through here. So, we have background animations available for the template. So, you can go ahead and turn this on, enable it for desktops or mobiles, no to mobiles, yes on. 
and then you've got your selector here. So you can add a selector. So if you wanted to say you want the background image for region two wrap to move up, you would select region two wrap, background animation, move up. If you want to move up and down, alternate. If you just want it to loop, then yes. The speed that you want to go and the background image size. You can set this to 100%. You can bring it down a little bit. You really have to measure and see how big your image is and how, how it's going to react to the speed. But what this does is it does a CSS3 animation. So it actually moves that background image up or down or left or right. This is really great for some cool effects. If you check out our I am UX template demo, you can see these background effects in action. Next is the back to top. So if you want to have a, a button to scroll to top, here's where you set it. You enable it. You can set it to the bottom right, the bottom center, or bottom left. In our template here, we have in the bottom right, the offset, scroll height to enable it. So this is where you want to enable it. Then you've got your opacity. So scroll height for the opacity setting. Because right now, we go ahead and we activate it at about 300. And then if you see our demo, you'll see that as you scroll in, it actually, the opacity changes. So it's not so prevalent when you're in the middle, but by the end, it's fully loaded. Your scroll duration, this is how long to scroll. This is the font awesome icon, what icon you want to use, and the icon size. Next is the hover effects. So these are um, CSS3 hover transitions. So instead of having, say, your ahref or maybe your menu item, has a color change in it. Instead of doing the hard color change, we just do a little transition to the other color. And we've gone ahead and put in the basic stuff as far as your link colors, your menus, that's all in there. But if you want to go ahead and add a custom class here, like we've done to several things, our image gallery plugin, our text wrap A, our circle hover, to give it a better animation, you can go ahead and put the class right here. Just make sure that you end it with no comma and you have a comma before you add a new one. You don't want to break the CSS. Next is the J particles. The J particles has the basic, which is enable or mobile device view, yes or no. Then you've got your particle effect and enable this particle, yes the style class. And as you saw in our user one module, we started off with an ID of J particle. So with this, we're affecting the J particle. So then you have your effect width and your custom parameters here. Now these custom parameters, you can get them all by visiting this website here. This will give you particles. If you've seen particles before, it's the kind of thing where there's dots and there's lines connecting and they move. So for this J particle, we changed that. We just made the dots big and took the lines out. So that's what's making the colored circles that you see moving around. Next, there's a wave option. This is set to no. Here's the custom parameters. This will make a wave, a wave form, or even a style like ocean looking wave. You can go view the demos up here by going to that link. The next is the snow effect. So this is the same thing. You put a class on it, and hey, let's say you want to have a you want to have snow on your whole website. You would just put maybe the body class here, and then you can put your custom parameters. Next is the parallax effect. I'm sure that um, you're all aware of parallax effect. That gives a uh, different scrolling to a background while you scroll. Say you're scrolling down, then it will be moving up and such. So you can go ahead and initiate a parallax effect to any one of the region backgrounds here. In this template, you'll see that we're using seven, five, and two. Preloader. So we do have a preloader in here. If you'd like to have a preloader on your website, you can go ahead and enable this. Here's your delay speed, the background color, the preloader style. We've got a spinner, a multicolor spinner, a bar, a border, a ball, an iPhone, um, an eye, a battery. We have many different icons there that animate. Then you can have text, text color, preloader transition style. Do you want it to slide up when it's done? Do you want it to fade? Do you want it to split? 
And then you have your preloader color, and that's the preloader style here. Scroll to reveal. This is the simple um, scroll to reveal JavaScript library that allows the scroll to reveal effects. So you can enable it or not enable it. For more info, you go to scrollrevealjs.org. Scroll rotate is just a vanilla JavaScript to rotate something as you scroll, as we're doing with our logo. So you would just enable it and then you put your class. So we want to make the logo IMG spin when you scroll. So we put logo IMG and logo 2 IMG is the mode. And the smooth scroll effect, this is for smooth scrolling. So it's not a very harsh scrolling. It was kind of initiated like on iPhones and such. And this is a um, free smooth scroll JavaScript effect. So you've got a bunch of settings here. Everything is set pretty optimized currently. So you want to be careful about what you're doing here and read up on a little bit if you want to actually change the scroll effect. Next, we have our advanced settings. And this is for the CSS mode. So we have several CSS files in our CSS. You have a style CSS, you have a default CSS, you have a typo CSS, and you have a grid CSS. If you add your own custom CSS or a template CSS to put your own custom stuff, that's another CSS file. So right now we're loading in separate files. So the template's just loading each CSS file. You can go ahead and compress it into one single file. This is gonna help with your page load speeds in some cases, but you do wanna check with your server settings to make sure it can handle it. Then there's head embedding. That just embeds it all in the head. CSS compression, yes or no. That's another thing you want to check and see um, if it's optimized for your hosting plan. Front page components. This is, do we want to show the front page component? Normally in a regular Joomla, your front end page component shows a front page article. So if you want to have no component on the front end and just modules, you'd say no, like we have here. And we have include jQuery, yes. This is including a jQuery library in no conflict mode. We've given you the option to turn this off because in a lot of cases, you, you might find some conflicts going on with different versions of jQuery by extension. So if you have an extension that's not working correctly, go ahead and try turning that off. It's more or less for troubleshooting. You really need to go ahead and optimize everything and say if maybe you're using K2 or something and they're calling JavaScript, there is an option inside of K2 to go ahead and not load the JavaScript since the template is already loading the JavaScript. So you want to check with your extension and see what version of JavaScript, if you can turn it off and just let the template handle it. Or if it's something you can't turn off and that extension is being used on your homepage and there's a conflict, you can turn it off here. And now for the menu assignment, the menu assignment is basic Joomla. You know, this is uh, where you want to select, which item you want this template to show. We just have it just like this. So more or less, this is if you have two or three templates installed and you just want to show a certain template on a certain menu link, you can do it here. Well, that was a long video, wasn't it? I hope this actually gave you a lot more insight into all you can do with this template. And we look forward to doing a lot more with the framework. And we look forward to the next template and the next video. And we'll see you next time.